Okay, so if you only studied basic algebra, you may not know exactly what to do to solve this equation, but you still should be able to get pretty close by using some other methods. So we have 3 to the x power is equal to 20, and we're trying to solve this equation for x. Now, if you think you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. Now, again, if you uh, don't know exactly what to do here, don't give up so easily. All right, so try to get as close as possible to the correct answer. But uh, what is the answer to this equation? 3x is equal to 20. Let's go take a look at the solution. The solution is x is approximately 2.72. Now, of course, there are other digits here, but I just kind of round it off. So if you got something close to 2.72, well, that indicates to me that you did this problem right, and that is fantastic. So we must give you a nice happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic log, uh, exponential equations using logarithms. Now, when you tell people that, that don't really know anything about math, they're going to be like, boy, you are a math genius. You must be an engineer at NASA and make a lot of money. Uh, but anyways, listen, with uh, kind of all jokes aside, if you are like totally lost, by the time you finish with this video, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about in terms of this particular topic. Now, um, I did indicate in the beginning of this video that uh, folks out there that have taken basic algebra uh, may not know what to do here. And that's perfectly okay because uh, in Algebra 1, which is kind of the first year algebra, you don't generally get this topic that we're discussing here. All right, Typically, uh, what this particular problem is taught at the second year algebra, uh, for the most part. Okay, So we're talking about exponential uh, functions, exponential equations using logarithms, right? For most courses, for most people, this would be like in a second year algebra course. If you've only taken a first year algebra course, well, then obviously you simply just haven't had this yet in mathematics. So this would be a nice uh, kind of introduction uh, to this topic, which is extremely important in mathematics. Okay, so let's go ahead and get going here. So 3 to the x power is equal to 20. Okay, now what type of equation is this? So in algebra, you need to identify what type of equation you're dealing with because there's all sorts of different type of equations, right? Uh, polynomial equations, uh, polynomial equations, uh, rational equations, radical equations, systems of equations, linear equations. I think go on and on. Quadratic equations. So this particular equation, uh, what kind of gives us a hint here is where the variable is at. Okay, the unknown value is in the exponent. So this type of equation is what we call an exponential equation. Okay, now what is the objective here? Well, we're trying to uh, find the solution, which is the value of x that makes this uh, equation true, okay? So we can kind of think about this in this manner, right? So here is our problem, 3 to the x power is equal to 20. So let's just kind of run some basic uh, experiments here. Now we say, all right, what value of x, 3 to what power is going to be 20? Well, let's just start running some numbers, right? So 3 to the first power, well, that's 3. Well, that's certainly not 20, so we're going to have to increase our power here, right? So we'll bump it up to 2. Now, 3 to the second power is 3 times 3. That's 9. Okay, well, that's better than 3. It's getting closer to 20, but we need to keep going, right? So how about 3 to the third power? Well, that's 3 times 3 times 3. That's 27. Well, now we went too much, right? So 3 to the third power is 27. We're looking for 3 to the sum power, I kind of squeeze it in right here, is equal to 20. Okay, so what can we kind of conclude here? Well, hopefully you can see that our power is going to be greater than 2, uh, but less than 3, and probably a little bit closer to 3. So if I was going to take a guess, maybe like 2.75. Now what someone could do just by using common sense is just to kind of do a guess and check method and just, you know, keep testing numbers until they get pretty close to 20, right? Three to some power. Of course, that's going to be some sort of decimal until you get pretty close to 20. But that is kind of a common sense guess and check approach. 
Now, if you take a look at our answer, okay, it definitely makes sense, right? 2.72, I mean, when we kind of look at our little trial and error here, that certainly seems uh, correct, right? Uh, and hopefully you can understand why. But what we don't want to do is just be like, well, I'll just kind of guess and check in order to solve a problem like this. Well, no, we don't want to do that. We want to be precise in our answer, and we're going to get into that right now. Okay, so uh, again, we're dealing with an exponential equation. Now, an exponential equation, remember, is where you're trying to solve for the variable, and the variable is in the exponent location of a power. Now, what you need to know is that when you have an exponential equation, you're going to be using logarithms. Okay. Now, on your calculator, if you have a scientific calculator uh, and you're just interested in this, you want to look for this button, the LOG button. Now, there's another button called LN. This is what we call the natural logarithm. This is the common logarithm. And typically, for most problems, you'll use uh, the LOG button. You could use both buttons. There is a, a specific uh, kind of situations where you use a natural log. Again, I don't want to go on uh, too many tangents here because this is a big discussion uh, in algebra. Now, if you're saying, yes, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is what I'm studying in my math class. I need help. Uh, for example, if you're taking like college algebra, well, I'm going to go ahead and leave uh, links to my um, algebra courses in the description of this video. You want to check out Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus, okay? So I teach this in both. It all depends on where you're at. But if you want a, you know, formal instruction from me, check that out. Um, also, I have a ton of additional videos on this stuff on my YouTube channel as well. Okay, so when you have exponential equations, you're going to use logarithms to solve those. And when we have a logarithmic equation, you're going to use uh, exponents. And of course, you may not even know what a logarithmic equation is. It's probably something that has, you know, like uh, a log in it, right? And some sort of equation, something like this. You're going to use x uh, exponents or powers. That's because exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverses of one another, all right? Okay, so again, if you've never learned this before, I'm giving you a really good, you know, quick summary of what this topic is about, and you'll have pretty good, um, you know, foundation to build upon uh, you know, after watching this video, right? So I'm going to kind of keep it simple. So, all right, so we have this exponential equation, so we're going to want to use logarithms to solve. All right, so how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and first make sure you understand what a logarithm is. Okay, now let me draw your attention right over here, okay? So this thing right here, I would say this in mathematics, this is log base 2, 16 is equal to 4. Now, some of you are saying, well, what does that all mean, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, I'm going to give you a lovely little saying right here. Okay, now you're ready. Here is the saying. It's bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs. Now, what is this guy? My, this guy is off his rocker. Oh, boy, I'm going to have to unsubscribe from his YouTube channel. So, but anyways, listen. If you can remember logarithm, bacon and eggs, then you got this. Now, what does that mean? B-A-E. Well, log B-A equals E bacon and eggs. So uh, what I'm talking about here is the following. I'll get back to this in a second. The B is a base, okay? So let's just look at this right here. Two to the fourth power, okay? Where's the exponent and where is the base? Well, the big two down here is the base. The little four up here is the exponent. And the answer, when I take two to the fourth power, the answer is 16, okay? So a base to an exponent is equal to the answer, right? So when you have bacon and eggs, it's log um, base. The base is B. This is the answer that's equal to the exponent. So in this particular example right here, 2 to the fourth power, that's equal to 16 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times itself four times is 16. So let's express this uh, uh, power, okay, using exponents, right, um, as a logarithm. All right, so we're just going to follow the, uh, the bacon and egg uh, approach here. So this is going to be log. What's the base? Now we have to, you know, focus in here. The base is 2, so I'm going to write that right there, okay? Uh, A, what's the answer? That's 16, so I'll write that right there, and that's going to be equal to the exponent, which, of course, is 4. Now, you know, at first, this is going to be confusing because it's new to you, but if you just take your time, you'll be able to write uh, logarithmic expressions as power expressions, exponential 
uh, you know, expressions using exponents, power expressions, okay? And you're going to have to be able to go from one to another, okay? So again, as long as you can remember bacon and eggs and the base to an exponent is equal to the answer, then you'll be good to go. Okay, so now that you understand logarithms and you understand that we're going to need to use logarithms to solve an exponential equation, uh, then we can actually solve this problem. Okay, but before we actually put all of our new knowledge to work, I would like to ask you if you could kindly subscribe to my channel. And if you're going to do that, make sure to hit that notification button. This really helps me, okay? It helps grow my uh, kind of virtual classroom, if you will. And, you know, I wouldn't ask if it didn't have a real big positive impact on uh, my YouTube channel, right? So YouTube has their way of doing things, but it really does have a major positive impact. It helps me reach other people that are looking to either, you know, they're just interested in math or they're looking to um, get help in math, right? Because maybe they're not learning in, in their classroom for whatever reason. My objective is to try, always try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. And by you subscribing, it really does expand my classroom. Thank you so much. This is the way I look right now. And back to the problem. Okay, so here we're, um, here is the problem. Okay, here's where we kind of first, you know, we're looking at the problem, like 3 to the x. Uh, what is this equal to? We kind of did a little experiments, 3 to the first. That's not going to work. Uh, 3 to the second. Uh, that is 9, 3 cubed. That's 27. So what is, how can we solve for x? Well, now with our new knowledge, uh, we can say, all right, this is an exponential equation, so I'm got, I have to use logarithms. And now I'm going to teach you how you use logarithms to solve an exponential equation. Okay, so the first step is, and I'm kind of skipping over a lot of things here because these um, problems can be much more complicated. But effectively, when you have a power, an, an, uh, a base and an exponent on one side and a number on another side, just like this uh, very simple situation, at this point, what we can do is take the log of both sides, the log of both sides. That's L-O-G, that's a logarithm of both sides. Now, here is what I want you to understand. If you see something like log of 17 or log of 20, now this looks complicated, right? Like, oh my God, this, this is advanced math. No, no, this is just a number. It's a decimal, okay? And if you do have a calculator handy, a scientific calculator, you can just go on your uh, phone and you could probably uh, use when your, your calculator app and put it into scientific mode. But you'll just see, you could put in uh, numbers, take the LOG of it. This is just a decimal, okay? So don't panic and stuff. All we're doing here is take the, uh, taking a logarithm of these numbers, okay? All right, so we're going to take the log of both sides. Now, do not do anything yet with your calculator. Okay, do not do anything. Well, that'll be at the very end. But uh, what we're going to do is take the log of both sides. Okay, remember the objective here is to solve for x. Now, when you study logarithms, okay, you, uh, there's some properties of logarithms that you need to know. And one of the best ones, uh, they're all important, of course, is you can take when you have the when you have the log of both sides when you take the logarithm of a of a power okay like this this exponent up here you can actually drop this exponent right here in front of the log okay so when I took log of three x I can actually take this exponent x and put it right in front of the log so now this is x log three is equal to log twenty. Now, at this point, this is a basic algebra problem, right? Now, some of you might say, well, you know, it might be basic for you, Mr. YouTube Math Man, but this is not basic for me. Well, listen, remember I told you that the log of a number is just a decimal, okay? This is just a decimal you can get in your calculator. This is another decimal you can get in your calculator, and we're solving for the variable x. So if you think about it, this is just x times some number, let's say like 7, is equal to another number, like say 14. So if I had x7 is equal to 14, we don't write things like this in algebra, right? We put the variable behind. So this is nothing more than 7x is equal to 14. So to solve for x, I just got to divide both sides of the equation by 7, okay? And hopefully you're going to say, oh, okay, I understand. You know, let's change that to a happy face. I know what I have to do. Do I have to divide both sides of the equation by log 3 to solve for x? Yes, indeed. Okay, that's what we have to do. And let's go ahead and see the, uh, the rest of this problem. Okay, so now, knowing that this is a decimal, this is a decimal, to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by log 3, and you're going to end up with this expression, log 20 over log 3. 
Now, uh, for many of you out there, uh, depending on what kind of you know class you're in, or if your teacher doesn't want you to use a calculator, this would be the exact correct answer. Okay, uh, most teachers would be happy with this, but we want to actually calculate this. All right, so back to my uh, thing I said in the introduction to this video. You're going to need a calculator. Okay, so in your calculator, you're obviously going to use the LOG button. That's log base 10. Okay, that's what we call the common log. You could use the LN button. That is log base E. Okay, uh, base E. E is a number in mathematics, uh, one of the most important numbers in math. But again, a lot of little tangents here. Uh, you know, uh, I don't want to get into this stuff. You're going to really, you know, need some full instruction on this. But what you need to understand is that we do need our LOG button, okay? So if you go into your calculator, just go LOG uh, log 20, divide that by log of three, you'll get approximately 2.72. There's some other digits here, but we'll just kind of round this off. So that's an approximation. Now, um, again, as I was talking about in the beginning of this video, some of you um, folks out there, um, you know, I would say you probably have to be uh, well over 50, 50, 60, for sure, yeah, probably 60 and beyond, uh, maybe in your late 50s. What am I getting at? Well, back in the good old days, just so you, some of you younger folks can appreciate, when you studied a book like, uh, let's say, Algebra 2, okay? Let's say this is a old school 1960s version, 19, early 70s version of Algebra 2. Guess what? You didn't have a calculator back in those days. Like when the first uh, basic calculators came out, I think like in the early 70s, they were like, you know, $10,000 and some crazy price like that, $5,000. Only engineers and stuff really had those. So uh, those folks that used to have to do this level of math, you would go into the back of your textbook and you had a bunch of tables. Okay, you would just go in the back of it and they, they work perfectly fine and you can kind of just uh, look up log 20 and you get a decimal of that and you put right there, you know, you just get that decimal approximation, log three, same type deal. So, you, you know, you would have to reference all these tables. You wouldn't need your book, okay? Now, that also holds true with all kinds of trigonometric functions. Everything that your calculator does for you now, you used to have to reference your book back in the good old days. Now, there was this other thing called the slide rule and the slide rule is amazing, okay? Uh, uh, I have some basic understanding and skill of it. Uh, you really, for those folks who know how to use a slide rule, that's super impressive. That's like a class in and of itself, but uh, some of the more advanced slide rules, okay? And again, this is stuff 50s, 40s, 60s, or uh, even probably into the early 70s. Uh, these are things that are they're basically like a ruler with a little thing, and there's all kinds of uh, numbers here on the side, and you would move this back and forth, and you could calculate uh, something like this using your slide roll, okay? Uh, engineers and whatnot had very um, kind of elaborate, detailed slide rolls. So those were amazing. So anyways, I bring this up as a little bit of math history uh, for some of you out there that, you know, you, you just don't understand how much more math was involved to learn back in the good old days because to do your calculations, you just didn't have the luxury of a calculator. Now, calculators are awesome. I definitely uh, love calculators. I have a whole bunch of them and you need to know how to use your calculator. But, you know, sometimes I think, uh, uh, you know, the with too much technology, I think it does distract from the principles and concepts that you need to understand. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in advanced math, check out these courses right here. So these courses, Algebra 2 and College Algebra, these are effectively the same level of mathematics. So whether you take my Algebra 2 or College Algebra uh, course, you're going to get the same material. Now, if you are further along in math and you need to study like advanced trigonometry and other topics, then check out my pre-calculus course. All right, so I'm going to leave uh, links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.